Thanks for coming back. I was super worried that you'd be annoyed about my voice on my first part podcast, my launch. I'm glad that you're back to listen to me, um, but I'm pretty sure it's not to listen to me, it's to listen to my guests. So if this is your first time listening, this is not your guru. I got a lot of questions on the uh, first podcast on like, what does that mean, not your guru? And all I can say is I'm not your guru. Nobody's your guru. Like I'm so sick of gurus. They have all the advice and all of the answers and they sit on platforms and they talk all day about how easy everything is. And if you just do one, two, three, and this motivational rah, rah, rah that we can see on a meme on Facebook or whatnot, but at no point do they say, okay, here's a person that has lived this life and done these exact one, two, three things. And if you do these things and that's what you want to be and that's your goal, it'll work. No, it's just like, here's an education, go and do it, right? And so like, I want to do this because I needed this 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. I think I need it today. I think it's therapy for me. Um, and I say that because I want to bring on people that, uh, even though I'm known, I'm known for legal, won't always be legal, but all of them are going to be entrepreneurs. All of them are going to have a story. And at the end of the day, I want audiences uh, who are listening to get two major things from it. One, it's possible if you want to be that person, if you want to live the life of this guest or myself, that is completely possible, regardless of any scenario you can throw at me, any excuse, any reason, any story about where you came from or where you are today or X, Y, and Z or whatever, but it is possible if you want it it will be possible because you'll hear from them, their story, and it won't be uh, much different than yours. Maybe it's a different flavor, but it's the same structure. They're a human being, you're a human being. Um, and then the second is uh, what I think is most unique about this podcast is actual one, two, three tangibles. My most frustrating moment in trying to get out of the trailer park um, and to create something that I just felt in my soul that I was destined for um, was a lot of people fluffed me up. A lot of people poured into me words that made me feel good, that made me feel motivated. And I'm not counting them out. It's so important. I need great music when I go to the gym. I got to be pumped up, right? But that doesn't get me through the workouts. If I don't know what to lift and when to lift, um, I'm not going to have progress. I'm not going to have results. And so I'm actually going to feel worse about myself and less motivated the next time I want to go, right? So this podcast, Not Your Guru, is bringing people on that are real human beings, just like you listening, that if you want their life, if you're uh, uh, intrigued by what they're doing today, hearing where they came from, how they got there, and second and most importantly, actual steps, tangible, like if you're listening and you're driving, you pull over on the side of the road and you're putting in a notepad, you're, you're telling Siri, remind me tomorrow, I need to do X, Y, and Z, because I didn't have that. And I made a lot of mistakes uh, because I didn't have the how to, right? Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce uh, my second guest, my second podcast, but sorry, Daniel, my first guy, probably one of my favorite people. Um, because his story is intriguing. Like, I just know I'm going to be begging to be the ghostwriter for his book one day, because what he's lived through, where he's come from, where he is today is profound. And I don't think he even knows it because I know him very well. Um, and you would never know it with him walking down the street because he does it with integrity and humility and just a lot of badass hard work. So here I go. I've got Freddie here. Freddie, tell us a little bit about just the, the, you know, the elevator pitch of who Freddie is. And then tell me your story, like wherever you want to start, like where did you come from? 
So thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on here. Um, I'll do my best not to screw it up. <laughs> um, so um, who I am in an elevator pitch, I, I would say I was, I was always kind of identified or maybe I identified myself as the underdog. I was the smaller, not as fast, not as strong uh, kid that was like, <laughs> If you tell me no, I'm just going to keep coming at you as, you know, harder and harder until I die, I guess. Um, I just developed that mentality as a kid. Uh, it, it followed me from high school all the way into uh, my one uh, unsuccessful semester of college <laughs> that I uh, didn't do too well. Uh, I ended up joining the Marines out of there. Um, so I, I guess I'll kind of start... Yeah. Ah, yeah. So I'll kind of start with that part. Um, so it was my senior year in high school. Um, my dad passed away and uh, it, it was pretty tough on me and my mom. I had to kind of take on um, some of the roles. I, I, I got a job instead of doing kind of some of the fun stuff like spring break type stuff. Um, it was just, I, I had to do it, right? Like, um, we didn't have a choice. Uh, we, we had bills or my mom had bills and I would try to help. And um, so that's what I did. Um, but I, I kind of, it was like a late re rebellious period, I guess, if you will. And I started getting into drugs. I started running drugs, smuggling, um, uh, just, you know, going down the wrong path. And so I actually had an incident. Um, I went to go deliver um uh a package if you will and um i had three guns pulled on me and i was like well this is it uh you know and turns out they were just uh they were just messing with me and you know i, I walked out of there unscathed but i was like okay uh i was gonna make like 200 dollars for that and i was like what in the fuck am i doing and so um I ironically passed by a Marine Corps recruiting office <laughs> and I was like, well, why not? So walk in, sign up, um, you know, ship off. And uh, that really, that straightened me out for a while. And, How and old were you? at that time I was 19. So I went in pretty much right after high school. And so it was kind of a delicate period because my mom was like, you know, I just lost her husband, obviously, and, you know, my dad. Really you were the man of the house uh, from what age? Um, I mean, 17, I guess. So, like, you know, my dad had a drug problem. Um, he, he had his demons, and so he was in and out and, uh, you know, bouncing from job to job, and, you know, it just wasn't stable, and I had a lot of resentment towards him because of that. And uh, it kind of carried on to my adulthood. I had to realize at a later time. Um, but, you know, with that being said, she she was like beside herself, like, no, you can't join like this. And so I, I made a deal with my mom that <laughs> I'll join the reserves for a year and go to college. And if I don't like it, right, uh, then I get to go active duty full time, you know, as a Marine. And, so sure enough, that's what so happened. You're already negotiating. <laughs> yeah, I was negotiating. Yeah, right. So I convinced her, and and uh, <laughs> I went to college for a semester before I actually shipped off uh, to the Marine Corps. And but that semester was a complete. I mean, I just partied. It was, Shit you know, I, yeah. I, it was a. I think I don't know if there was a negative GPA that you could achieve. That's probably what I had. So. Um, it was a good thing when I joined. It was a very good thing for me. It gave me structure. It, it, it and I loved it. Um, you know, I was in for eleven years. So, so let me ask you because I think that's super important for someone that um, has a similar story. I mean, look, sadly, our stories aren't unique. Mm -hmm. We feel like they are because they're ours, right? But they're not unique. Um, People 
all the time hear me talk about my trailer park beginning and and your struggle with a, a dad that had a drug problem and, a, and basically a single mom for however long and then the death of your dad and having to be the man in the house and and getting him drugs yourself and, and dealing and whatever we we all think because it's our story it's super unique but sadly it's not so mm -hmm. many people have these beginnings right the majority have the struggle beginnings than uh, the minority that don't, right? And by the way, the minority that have a different start that seems from privilege have their own struggles, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the most unhappy uh, humans on earth are the ones that were born in a privilege because they have struggles that we don't give credit for or we don't give credibility or we we go oh yeah tell me about how you were born into this mansion right like i don't know right but the 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 thing is we're all humans on this earth and our stories aren't unique and that sounds like it's such a uh negative thing to say but it's actually empowering for me because if i my story my my struggle and your struggle growing up is not unique that means that I can do anything. Yeah. But what's uh -huh. interesting is people that grew up like you and people that grew up like me, there's many of them that we grew up with that don't live your life that you're about to tell that you live now and that don't, don't live my life. What makes that unique? Mm -hmm. And the first pivot moment that I've heard from you so far is the Marine Corps. The first pivot moment for me that made me unique from the, the the girls that I actually still see on Facebook that I grew up in the trailer park with that live a shit show still to stay at 40, right? What made you think, what made Marines or that path or that first pivot, what made that cross your path? What was that tangibly? So... I mean, I, I guess if we want to label it, it would be uh, knowing that I wasn't, I, I wasn't being productive. I, I wasn't doing anything that brought value to my family. And um, I was putting myself in, in positions that would just get me killed and bring more heartache to my family. So, you know, it was, it was one of those things and, and like, even looking back on it, I'm like, I, I I don't know, know that I necessarily could pinpoint, pinpoint something specific, like the reason I did it. It was kind of a culmination of all those things, right? Like, okay, I'm going down this path and my future does not look great. Um, and I would be taking away from the people that I love by not taking advantage of the skills and abilities that I have that just anybody else has, right? Um, outside of hard work, I wouldn't consider myself like an extremely talented person. I'm just, I don't know how to say, how to accept no. Like if you tell me no, I'm like, okay, well, I'll figure it out. If you tell me I'm slow, then I'll just run till I die. If you tell me I'm weak, I'm like, well, let me, I guess I better hit the gym three times a day. You know, like <laughs> I, I just, I, it's a, it's a more of a discipline and like what you're talking about with the guru stuff too, right? Like you know, I used to rely heavily on motivational videos, but what happens when you can't get motivated? You have to rely on the discipline and something that's instilled in you to just work, just work, just work and use a little bit of your intuition to know that, you know what, this is the right path, right? And even if you get bumped off that path, I believe truly that it's for a reason and that another opportunity will present itself and you need to keep your eyes open so that you can take that opportunity. So, so, so I mean, I think the, the tangible is if you're listening and you have a similar story or a similar struggle or you feel right now today, look, where I am today and what I'm doing is not making me happy and I could be arrested. <laughs> I could be dead. Um, uh, I, I have no ability of how I'm going to even get through from today, Thursday to Friday. Knowing that alone and then pivoting to, okay, what extreme can I go to that's going to have purpose and education in my life? And for Freddie, it was the Marine Corps because it gave purpose. 
it made him work. Like he had to work physically and mentally. He had to learn and he had to, to challenge his body to work. And so I think that if you're listening and you're in that moment he's talking about many years ago, then you have to go, okay, what is available to me in my life? What resource do I have that's going to give me education and physically tax my body? And then get to that hard, right? Very much so. Very so much you're 11 so. years in. Tell me about that. So I had this dream and passion that I wanted to be a special operations uh, Marine. And so for years, uh, from the time I came in to the time that I uh, was honorably discharged, I, I pursued that. And so it just always, something always came up, right? So I had um, a previous wife at the time and, and we did not get along well. Uh, it was a very, very short marriage and um, but I got my beautiful daughter out of it and we have a great relationship. We maintain a great um, uh, co-parenting atmosphere uh, for her, I believe. And so, um, uh, you know, that's just my glass half full, if you will, in that portion of, of my life. But uh, in the beginning, I wanted to do that. She didn't want me to do it. Okay, I need to back up a little bit. Uh, but this is something I'm passionate about and I don't want to kill my passion or kill my dream. You know, I still want to pursue this, uh, get to a next duty station, uh, put in for it again. This is post-divorce, um, deployment comes up and I can't do it. Uh, get to the next duty station. Uh, I get into a fight with another Marine and they're like, no, we're not going to sign off on you going. And, uh, then, um, I'm actually in Japan and I put in for it and, uh, I had already surpassed the rank that I needed to be, to be able to, to, uh, uh to qualify. Right. And so, uh, I get out, uh, I get orders to Marine special operations command, um, in Camp Pendleton first MSOB is what's called. Uh, and, uh, I was going to be on the support element. And so oh, I was, gonna do... you know, Aspen was born in the Mojave desert. And oh, Camp nice. Pendleton was uh, way better than Mojave uh, Marine Navy Base Hospital. So that's where I went to my doctor's visits. <laughs> I would say so, for sure. Yeah, that place sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's the Mojave yeah. Desert. It's, uh, yeah. The best place to train as a Marine for Iraq because it's very, very similar. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, I, I, I got out, well, I had gotten orders to first MSOP and then I went to school um, uh, to uh, be what was considered like a, it's called a coxswain team leader. So, uh, you know, in the movies, they see the guy in the back that's with the motor in that, you know, rubber Zodiac boat, that was going to be me. But I, it wasn't good enough because I wasn't going to be labeled as an operator. I was going to be on the team as a support element. I was going to get to do everything that they did. I'll go to all the schools if I wanted to, uh, but it wasn't good enough. And so um, I decided to get out to go be a Navy SEAL and uh, set everything up. I gave up a $100,000 pension, uh, early retirement. Uh, so at that time, Marine Corps was downsizing and, uh, you know, they were, they were handing out money to get people to, to get out. And so I turned it down because I was just going to have to give it right back whenever I came back in the Navy. Um, and, uh, then I couldn't get back in. And so in my mind, I, I'm, I'm this lifer Marine. I've, I've, I'm finally getting to this juncture where I'm going to achieve what it is that I've pursued really for the past 11 years. And all of a sudden I can't, like, I got out to get back into something and now I can't do it. And so, um, I went on for about a year and a half you know, post getting out, I was, I was working two jobs, I was working a landscaping job. And then I think I bounced like, uh, I was doing some bartending or, or waitering or, or something similar to that. And so, um, we were broke. I'd saved just he, enough. He money. shut those years out guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I think it was bartending or bouncing or I, was no, doing I don't know. But I, I, was, I was hustling. I was the hustling. Thing, the heaviest the electric bill. For sure. The heaviest thing was the landscaping. I remember that shit very clearly. So, uh, 
you know, and I did it on purpose so that I could be an element so I could train early in the mornings. And then I do that. And it was getting me ready to be uh, at buzz. And uh, Wait, so I don't want to cut you off, but that part, we that just were born to operate that way, we fluff over it. But there's so many tangibles there, Freddie. Um, you chose landscaping, bartending, doing those hustle side type jobs because of why. Because this is very important. You just said it, your schedule, because that allowed you to do what? To focus on my training, to focus on what I needed to do, if I needed to get paperwork or whatever it is, so that I could actually achieve what it is I wanted to achieve. But my goal. So you worked on where you wanted to be in your goal, in your dream. Let's call it a dream, right? Okay. And you worked to make dollars to pay the bills mm -hmm. in the time zone that did not take away from your long-term goal. Yes. So audience listening, if you want to have what you're about to hear where Freddie is now, or if you want anything from me or anybody in your life, you, you look at them and you say, oh, I, I want that life. I want you to hear something that is a trend about anybody you could be looking up to in awe right now. In the moments where you are broke and beat down, beat down. You had a little bit uh, of success and dream and like, okay, I'm going to be this in the Marine Corps. And I'm going to have this. I'm going to be, I'm going to have, this is it, right? And then it was taken away from you. Mm -hmm. Instead of being angry or defeated or whatever, you're broke still. That doesn't change the reality. Yeah. You still had to do whatever you had to do to pay the light bill and eat ramen noodles, right? Mm -hmm. But you still orchestrated it in a way that the first priority was your training for what your long-term goal was. 100%. So many people have less defeat in their life or the same. And if you're listening and it taps your belly, it taps your belly and just go, oh, see, this is why life sucks. I'm just going to go get a nine to five job and this is why it sucks or worse. I'm not going to work at all. I'm so sorry for myself and really dig my grave. Instead, you took that and you said, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I feel all the things, the other person, but I'm going to act different. And not only am I going to go hard, strong into, let me just get a nine to five. Let me just do any job I can do to pay the bills. No. What job can I do that gets me just by, but does not take away from what I'm actually trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. That takes discipline. It takes sacrifice. It's an elite way of thinking. And sadly, in that moment, you probably were even conscious that's why you're doing it. Your heart just led you to, I don't give a crap about this landscaping and this bartending. You can't remember what the other job was. You're like, I think it was bartending or wind tables. You don't even remember. You know why? Because your heart and your focus and your mindset was training mm -hmm. for what I really want in life. And so the tangible here, guys, if you're listening, is if you're in that defeat moment, suck it up. And do we have to do to survive and like live and eat and breathe, but not at the detriment of what you truly want. So if it means you have to sacrifice harder, you have to eat less, you have to breathe less, do it. Do as little as you can to get by and, and breathe as little before you die and make that space for your focus and your primary, which is what you really want in life right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, a part of that too is understanding and knowing that just because you're doing those things, um, it, it doesn't mean that it's a permanent, it's a permanent circumstance. It's something that's going to be there forever. Like 
if you go into it with that mindset, then yeah, absolutely. You are what you think you are, you know? And so uh, I knew it was temporary and uh, it just is, it, it is what it is for now. What good does it do for me to complain about it? You just keep on pressing. And so, um, you know, I get to that juncture uh, and about a year and a half goes by. And so uh, for three years of my time frame that I was in the Marine Corps, I was actually a recruiter. I was a recruiter in Fort Worth. And um, so I, I knew how to do all the paperwork. I'm like, guys, don't bullshit me. Like, give me the paperwork. I'll literally do it for myself, right? Um, don't give me this runaround. And so uh, for people that don't know that are not from a military background, getting out and coming back in is harder than somebody coming off the street that uh, doesn't have any prior service. Um, for whatever reason, the, the way that they structured it, there's certain what's uh, called boat spaces that uh, there's only a certain amount of uh, people they can bring in at a certain rank for a certain job. I mean, don't be sweet about it. Like, I'm interested in see all day long. <clears throat> they provided me Aspen um, at no cost and free housing, um, although it was in the desert. Uh, but we know why it is. It's because the same reason as a business owner, why if you have two applicants, one that left you, no matter how they left you, right or wrong, right? And one that you've never experienced and you only have two spots <clears throat> or one spot, <clears throat> you're going to put that person that you haven't experienced yet because we're all wowed by the unknown and the potential of someone that we do know. Well, Even and they get to put them where they want to, mm -hmm. instead of going back where you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah, they're gonna was, be hungrier. They're gonna be less entitled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, we're gonna get paid less. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just I got to this juncture where it was like it just wasn't gonna happen. They were bringing up excuses like uh, having to do with clearance and like you know a speeding ticket from. 20 years ago, you know, just like stupid stuff. And so I got to the point where it was like, okay, now we're really, really broke. We have depleted all of our savings because we saved enough to basically go through that transition period that was only supposed to be about a few months, right? So about you a year- about who we is. Uh, so me and my current wife, Angelica. Mm -hmm. uh, so she so is- By the way, y'all got to like recon him and social stalk him. His wife is beautiful and smart and strong and i mean she needs her own podcast because yeah, she mean, is really at this juncture she's the only reason uh you know i keep doing anything at all yep. <laughs> so you're like i'm totally out of my league with her and i better fight like hell to pay this <laughs> electric bill and do better <laughs> basically yeah no she she's awesome so just to, uh to tap on her like she, I mean, it, to the point where like, she's like, you know, me pursuing certain endeavors and wanting to be like the best of the best in, in the military and then getting out and be an entrepreneur. And, you know, the, the, the thing that's helped me so much is knowing that she could really care less about that. She could care less about money. Like it's just time. She wants me to be present with our family because you know, at the end of the day, all the money in the world doesn't replace the time that you spend with an individual, the memories you create with an individual. And, and she had to teach me that. Like, I was so like hell bent in like tunnel vision, right? I, I got to get this. I got to get this. Like nothing else matters. Well, I'm doing it for my family, right? Like that's the common thing people say. Uh, I have to do this. Like, this is my job. I want to provide for my family, whatever it is. Common thing or justification. What was that? common thing or justification i think the term is justification. absolutely and so um she's just man she's she's my world like she's awesome like she helps yeah, and Delica. yeah she's she's so awesome so we'll make she, sure we clip this piece for you and you can send it to her <laughs> okay definitely give me some brownie points <laughs> yes so no but she you know on this whole journey she's been they're, you know, supporting me the whole time. I want to go left. Okay, we're going left. We're going to go right. Okay, we're going right. 
Hey, but if you want to get a job and you just go work at McDonald's, I don't give a damn. That's cool too. You know, that was, I, when she told me that I was like really profound to me for of all the things anybody ever had ever told me, like, I was like, what? Seriously? She's like, I literally don't care. Go work at McDonald's. Like that'll pay her bills. Like <laughs> what? Seriously? And so no, not to talk down to McDonald's. I just had this entrepreneur mindset that mm -hmm. that is not where I want to be. I want to be here. And if I do that, I can't get here. Right. And so, um, so that's most, interesting and also a tangible for the, the audience that listens is I challenge people. Um, entrepreneur has become a hashtag, right? It's become something that is better than someone else. Someone that is better, smarter, works harder than McDonald's. And what I want to tell people is, at the end of the day, you have to choose what you want personally. And there is no higher level than what your goal is personally. So if you want to work at McDonald's and you want that life balance of it, and um, it pays your bills and you're with your family and that is contentment and success for you, I want to be you because all I'm looking for is contentment and success. Unfortunately or fortunately, um, because I think I provide a lot of good in the world, um, my being motivates me in a way where I have to be emotionally attached to what I do. And I have to um, grow things and I have to be engaged in solving problems. And so I think it's amazing that you have a partner in life that looked at you and said, I love you as a person. And if you're unhappy, you can go work at McDonald's. <clears throat> and something happened where you said, I feel more motivated because I'm not gonna go work at McDonald's because that's not my level of success. I'm not, I'm not talking about money, guys, please. This podcast is not about how you make more money or how I make this much money or Freddie makes this much money and what it's not and, and how McDonald's you make this much. Or, it's not, it's about, if you want this level of success or what this life looks like, because that changes, like right now, my level of success is how little can I work? And I don't want to lose my lifestyle or make a dollar less, but I don't care to this day if I make $1 more. I don't need a bigger house. I don't need more cars. Um, you know what I need? My level of success is more like McDonald's. I clock in and clock out. And the rest of my existence is my daughter, my bonus babies, and my man, right? So that changes in the season's life. So I want to say, look, it's not about listen to this podcast and learn all the ways to make all this money, whether it be real money or fake money or whatever. No, it's about if you want to be doing the things that Freddie has done, whether that's the money he makes now or the businesses he's developed now or the relationships he is profoundly known for developing. I mean, net worth, net worth, that cliche hashtag is what Freddie had, is all about, which as we fast forward, you're gonna hear. Um, but the tangible is someone looked at him and said, regardless, you matter and your happiness matters. And that actually motivated him to run further away from McDonald's because in his heart, he's an entrepreneur, right? 100%, 100%. And to just, you know, add on to the, the talk of success in general, right? Like success comes in many different forms and it has, it literally has very little to do with the monetary aspect of it, right? Like. What I would say it uh, has only less than one percent to do with actual money in the bank. Yeah, and it's 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 it is it just boils down to the happiness, right? Like, are you happy? Mm -hmm. Are you content and happy? And if you are, then that's awesome. A success. 
that's success. That is, you achieve what it is that you wanted to achieve and, and nobody can take that away from you. And so keep doing what you're doing, you know? And so- well, What you can't say is I'm unhappy with my life and I don't deserve that or I can't have that or I am happy and, you know, they're this or that because of a money or dollar exchange amount, right? Mm -hmm. It's, if you say out of your mouth, I want my life to look like this, I'm presenting to you someone like Freddie who has gone through hell and high water to have today the life he lives in. And guess what? He's going to continue to go through hell and high water because that is life. That is journey. And the success is not, I have arrived. It evolves, right? Absolutely. So you have this woman look at you and say, whatever you want to do, whatever form of success, whatever happiness you want, I'm here by your side. So the tangible, if you're listening, is if you have someone in your life, whether it be a parent, uh, a sibling, a spouse, a wannabe spouse, whatever it is, whoever is in your circle, they better believe in you and believe that all they want from you is for you to be happy and a healthy human being. And if you have anyone in your circle that doesn't believe in you, you're gonna start believing in them, right? If you have anyone in your circle that says, I need you to be this. I need you to make this. I need you to have this. I need you to create this. They are your cancer. And I swear, if you're driving, you better turn off the road and write down, fire that person from my life. <laughs> because you will be working at McDonald's and you won't want to be. And that won't be your happiness. It's very important, the space and environment that you protect and create um, for your own goals, whatever that be, is to have someone that says, regardless of your goals, I don't need that from you. You need that from you. Right, Freddie? Absolutely. She said, McDonald's, entrepreneur, I don't care. You said entrepreneur, the harder route, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, But you okay. were actually more motivated because she said, I don't care. I need you to be Freddie. Yeah. If someone says, I need you to be this, you've got to, even if that's actually what you want to be in life, Get them out of your life right now. Write it down. Fired from my life. Mm -hmm. So now you're motivated. Thanks to this amazing woman. This pep talk. And you don't go to McDonald's. So what do you do? So, you know, I've hit that, that point where I'm like, well, I got to go left or right. We got no money. And, and I kind of had this epiphany and it, it, it was heartbreaking at the time because it went against everything that I wanted or thought that I wanted the dream that I thought I wanted at that time. Right. And so, um, uh, I was depressed. I decided I was not going to be going back in the military at all whatsoever. Um, and you know, that was a, over a decade of my life that, I mean, I had become that, right. Like it's all that I knew. It was your identity. Yep. It absolutely was. And it took me a while to adjust. It took me time getting out of my head because I, I had become, you know, slightly not clinically depressed and just, I was upset. I was, uh, you know, I, I was not becoming what I thought I wanted to become. So, um, I'm like, well, I got to find a career, right? Like, what am I going to do now? I didn't have any transition, like a normal exit from military, uh, a military member would, uh, usually you have something lined up, you've already submitted resumes and things like that. So, you plan for it yeah yeah so i go on craigslist i'm looking i'm digging i find an ad that says make 100k plus in real estate and i'm like okay sounds good to me so i i went to work for this uh real estate investment firm and i learned how to wholesale houses and flip houses and understand margins and and everything that encompasses real estate investing on a single family uh, house side. Um, and it didn't take me very long to realize that um, what this company was doing 
and all the hours that I was putting in to try to, you know, make ends meet because it was a commission only uh, structure, I could do by myself with my own company and make all the money and not struggle so much. So um, in doing that, that was my kind of shift to entrepreneurship, if you will. And that's when kind of, I guess, all hell broke loose in reference to like <laughs> all the bad stuff starting to happen because uh, I didn't have any money saved up. I didn't get a regular full-time job and then try to build something on the side and then transition out of the full-time job. I just jumped in head first because that's just the type of person I am. And it was now looking back on like, I would never recommend that to anybody. Um, uh, it was very uh, foolish, right? There's better ways to do it. I just took the very, very hard way. So we're building this real estate business. You have a journey, you have a journey uh, and a testimony from that. So if someone is listening and they want to be the arrived current day Freddie, and they were in that moment, what would you tangibly tell them to do differently? Because I, by the way, I learn more from my failures than my wins every single time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I drug my family through the dirt, not realizing that if I had just got a nine to five job enough to, that made enough money to pay the bills and then worked on my business on the side and got it to a level to be able to exit that full-time job and then have the income to suffice and, and, um, uh, you know, pay for our, our regular expenses, this whole journey would have been way less stressful, way less of a headache. Like it just, it would have been way better. And, and that was me being stubborn and, uh, you know, slightly ignorant. And, um, you know, if, if I had to look back and tell myself, you know, a better path, it would be just get a full-time job. Um, and maybe you now that you've actually now that you've actually lived through it, if you were to go back to yourself, how long and how much do you months like you know bill expense that you would have saved before you made that pivot? Uh, I would say probably at least a year, at least a year. Um, it it took me that long to really hone in on what worked and what didn't work. It took me that long to be able to really make good money, right? Um, but even that good money was sporadic. It would be like, okay, yeah, we got a house flip and yeah, we made 30 grand, but we had it for four months. So if you break that down, 30 grand in four months, it's really not a ton of money. Like that's good money, right? Like, but if I'm cycling some we get fooled by that lump sum in our bank and we it, don't multiply. Well, if I worked at McDonald's, <laughs> I would have made this every week, right? Right, exactly. It, it's not that far off, you know? And it's a sustainability thing. Um, I At that time, I don't believe my discipline was good enough to be able to siphon that money out correctly. So, you know, I'm like, man, we just made 30 grand. Let's go let's go have steak and lobster and go do this. Yeah, like, you went from starvation to mm -hmm. except. Yep. And there, was no, there was no gradual, yes. there was no in between. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the beautiful thing is our listeners get to learn from this mistake that you made. Now, look, who you are and what you did and how you pivoted and, and, and what you did to, to make that mistake something that is beautiful today, Look, that's something to learn from as well. But mm -hmm. this podcast is really about not just everyone coming on here and talking about at the end how successful I am. Great. How amazing is my life? No, it's like, hey, here's where I totally screwed the fuck up. And if I could go back, mm -hmm. because I've already lived it. So, like, you did that. And then you knew how long you suffered because you didn't have that money in the bank or you didn't do it the right way. Well, guess what? Now someone listening that wants to be Freddie today can be Freddie today faster with less pain, not dragging their family through the mud, right? 
by just hearing, if I would have stayed on another year and been disciplined to work on my end goal business while respecting my nine to five that was paying the bills, I would have gotten here faster with less pain and heartache and less torture to the people that had to live with me during the process, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the whole reason for this Not Your Guru podcast is about that. It's here's how I would have done it differently tangibly so that you can. Yeah. And that's where the extra work comes in. Like if you really want this to work, whatever it is that you're pursuing, uh, just like I did whenever I was trying to get back in to be a SEAL, I was waking my ass up early and I was staying up later. And then I had my middle time that I was working to produce income, right? Uh, regular income. And so it, it was the same, con I just lost sight of it. I was like, no, I, I need to focus here, right? Because uh, uh, where where focus goes, energy flows, right? And so- oh, was, I'm sure some guru told you, uh, you just need to dive head first and then you'll figure it out. You need to jump out of the plane without a parachute and yeah. you'll learn how to fly on the way down. Call yeah, me. Uh, I'm not a bird. Yeah. I'm not going to learn how to fly on the way down. Yeah, I, I think... Do you, uh, you have to take courage? Do you have to take risk? Absolutely. But we have so many gurus out there saying, jump out of the plane without a parachute. You'll learn to fly on the way down. No, that is not true. <laughs> yeah. So so I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Will Smith actually had a motivational video. I remember I used to watch it all the time. If you have a plan B, it distracts from plan A. And I used to be like, hell yeah, yeah. that's me. And there's a better way. <laughs> it's, not about, it's not about plan B. It's just about doing the transition in a way that's more logical, right? Like just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't mean you have to be illogical, right? Like, oh my gosh, look, yes. Do I take risks as an entrepreneur my entire life? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I'm not crazy. Yeah. I'm not crazy. I don't just, it's like I believe in God. My faith is so strong. But I don't just wake up every day and I'm like, whatever God wants, it will be. <laughs> yeah, that's, crazy. Yeah. that's crazy, right? <laughs> I'm taking a risk of having in faith in something I don't have proof in, right? Yeah. That is taking risks, but also being logical because of something that I know is true in my heart. Being crazy is waking up at being saying, it must be the way it's supposed to be because God wouldn't have it happen if it wasn't. So I'm just going to be willy nilly about everything. And just, you know, if I walk in that street, God will save me and the bus won't hit me. No. Like it's about being logical, having courage, not being risky. I don't even like the word risk. Nothing I do is risky. And believe me, I've done some uh, risky things in my life, uh, definitely investment wise, some with Freddie, but none of it, <laughs> but none of it is actually risky. I have been, I have had courage, right? But I've been logical in all of my risks. So that's kind of the whole thing is I think that we're fed, just go out there and be crazy. Um, you know, the, some landscaper who works for a company is like, oh, I had mowed for a year for you. I can just start my own business tomorrow. I'm not even paying my bills now with what you pay me, but I can start a business. That's crazy. Yeah. But I think we hear that on social media celebrities by the way they don't have the the knowledge of what a dollar means anymore right mm -hmm. so they're doing it from a emotional um soul base and i believe in that right so like will smith i love him to death then not having a plan b because then plan a will never work i agree on the concept i agree that your priority just like you said your job that paid the bills, but you still did the job that paid the bills, the hours, you had to work hard, you had to do manual labor, you had to do the job you can't remember yeah. so that you could do the work for the, the plan A. But that doesn't mean you can't have something that makes plan A happen. 
there's so many entrepreneurs that go out there that have brilliant ideas that are super smart, that have work ethic, and they fail, and they don't even have plan B anymore because they jumped out of that plane and they weren't smart, they weren't disciplined. They weren't disciplined, they weren't logical. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, like you, Freddie, you were not disciplined, you were not logical, and you went head first into the concrete pond. And so, how did you survive? Because I know where current day Freddie is. So, <laughs> how did we get there? <laughs> so, you know, I keep beating my head against the wall for a while, and it was pretty tough. And so, in this time span, it was about a right around a four year time span from the time that I got out of the Marine Corps that I was trying to get back in to the time when I actually uh had quote unquote made it in real estate right and first kind of year and a half uh i was uh towards the end of that transitioning i, I uh from that investment firm to the entrepreneur side i was with that firm for i think it was like nine months and uh that's when i branched off of my own and so moving into it i mean pretty much out the gate it was a struggle like robbing Peter to pay Paul to pay the bills. Um, I'm talking and having meetings with people uh, to try to raise capital so that I can buy my own flips. And, you know, I'm, I'm taking people out to, to dinner and stuff and I have no money. I'm like, just enough to like pay for their stuff. I'm like, you know what? I'm not really hungry. Like playing this role, like I, I want to pay for you. Like, I appreciate you meeting me, you know, type thing. Let me pay. Uh, knowing damn well, that was like, that's what we had. Like I, I, I got to the point I was pawning stuff. Um, I even pawned some of the awards I had won when I was on recruiting. Like just, I mean, it was on a level of just whatever it takes. You know, um, I got to pawn some stuff. I got to sell some stuff. I got to barter some stuff. I'll buy this cheap and then sell it for, you know, $20 more. I mean, just whatever hustle I could pull to, to keep us, you know, fed, right? Um we were in a, an apartment by ourselves, uh, me and Angelica and Maxim. And um, then we ended up getting to the point where we had to move in with my mom. And uh, uh, we were with her for about a year, but she was helping us so much. She ended up going through foreclosure. So she told me right before they were about to foreclose. And I was like, mom seriously like you didn't like why didn't you tell me this like months ago like I could have like stopped this she's like, like it's okay and I was like dude seriously right now like and so I'm gonna try not to get choked up but no um, she believed in you so much that she didn't even breathe the word she would go she would go to zero because she believed that you were gonna make it happen yeah and it was you know so it I had, it was like almost like added pressure a little bit, but uh, in a good way, like I, I was just more driven. Like I have to make this work, right? So she gets foreclosed on. Uh, right before that though, actually I had my truck repossessed for the second time and it ended up being my cousin. <laughs> he showed up to the door and I'm like, dude, what are you doing here? And he's like, you live here? And I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, he turns around and I'm like, oh shit. You're like, <laughs> so, bam, bam. Uh, like, do he's it. Like, dude, he's like, let me go talk, let me go talk to my boss. And I'm like, man, they, <laughs> they won't, they won't let me. <laughs> we gotta take it. And I was like, you know, I, I, it was one of those things I was in good spirits. Like it was like, even though this bad stuff was happening, and like, you know, you have your moments where it's like, man, I'm super down. Uh, I tried my best to just be like, it's just part of the process, right? I'm learning like yeah. this. Is, it's just gonna make things way better whenever you achieve it, right? Like, cause it, I think people don't talk about it enough. People don't talk about it enough. People don't put a sensation on enough. Today yeah. fucking sucked. Today sucked. And it is what it is. You just keep on pressing, like people only talk about the highlight reels, and then other people jump head first, thinking, well, so and so did, and nothing bad happened to them because that person wasn't talking about the bad shit that happened. They were talking about the second time the car was repoed and their cousin came and got it the second time, right? Like they were talking about their mom that foreclosed the house trying to make this dream happen because people don't want to talk about it because we're embarrassed or 
Um, we're not uh, uh, okay being confident that like today sucks. Yeah. Today and this happens, but I know that I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think if more of us and more podcasts actually were like this and weren't just like, here's the marketing advice and I'm a billionaire, right? And I'm like, I'm counting all these billionaires that are on these podcasts and gurus. And I know the percentage in the US of billionaires and we've exceeded it on Monday, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, we're not being real it's anymore. It's blood. People come on my podcast and they're like, is it okay if I say this or if that's okay? I'm like, I want the real raw, the real real. Because yeah. I want people listening to go, shut up. You can come from anywhere. You can do anything. You can be anything. And it's going to be hard. And you're going to fail. And everyone that you want to be like right now today failed and had their car repoed twice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's definition of hard is uh, very different, right? Yeah. Like, so you had a bad day and it was hard and you gave up, like, uh no it really wasn't that hard you just gave up you know like and, and so my story is a little different in that aspect because like I said I, I could have made better decisions right like nobody has to go what I went go through what I went through but for me personally it was a must because of all the things I learned from it it, it wasn't oh this woe is me this happened to me no 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 this happened to me because uh, it was a result of what I put into my life. Everything good that happens to me is my fault. Everything bad that happens to me is my fault as well. And taking responsibility for that and knowing like this, I, I'm like, I love everything that has that has happened to me in the past from a uh, lessons learned approach, right? Not like a, I loved it in the moment or anything like that. Like nobody does, right? But man, it was, uh, it was a hell of a ride. And, and I'm still on that ride, you know, and I'm, I'm just taking every lesson that I have and, and continuing to press as best as I know how. So um, uh, it's a lot easier when you have a, a roadmap and you learn those lessons, though. So um, I think, you know, as far as just the tangible there, like it just because my journey, like in your journey was a certain way. And, you know, with people listening, like, OK, he went through this and this and this. Um, uh, you don't have to go through those things. You can take the lessons learned and kind of accelerate where you get to a certain point, but just know that it's going to continue to be hard. You're just going to have different difficulties that you'll have to overcome and always look at things with a, a glass half full instead of glass half empty and, and continue to press through them. Because at the end of the road, as long as you stick to your plan A and whatever that mission or dream is that you want to achieve, adjust as needed to get there. But as long as you stick with it, like 100% you can do it. Like the average person can do it. So. 1,000%. I mean, I think that's what it's about. It's not your guru is, can I hear and can you present me someone that has made it, that has gotten through that piece of the journey, hellfire and high water. Um, can you show me and let me hear all the pitfalls? So I can avoid them. Yeah. It's 2022. I didn't have that when I was 20. I'm about to be 40. I didn't have that. Had I had a podcast like this that wasn't trying to be like, let me tell you how awesome we all are and how if you just try harder, you could be as awesome as us or as a smart or good looking or whatever. Totally talking about myself. Um, <laughs> no, like, can someone please pull back the curtain and tell me all the pitfalls so I can avoid them? That would have been amazing 20 years ago. I'd have less of them, right? No, we've got people that get on social media and podcasts and say, dive from the highest diving board into concrete. And you'll figure it out before you hit the concrete. And guess what? You don't because we're human. <laughs> And there's gravity and there's concrete. <laughs> like, okay, so where are we now today? So fast forward, you know, go through all that, the foreclosures. So in my flipping days, I had two foreclosures, a deed in lieu. Uh, my truck had been repossessed twice. The second time we just let it go. Um, 
uh, mom gets foreclosed on. I move into an apartment with my mom, my wife and kids, my brother and his kids, and it's only a two bedroom. Um, and I buy another car. It was a cash car from uh, a wholesale deal that I did because I didn't have a car because mine got repoed. Uh, and it was a bad decision on buying that car because it was a piece of crap and it lasted all of like three weeks and I wasted all that money and then sold it, you know, and made a little bit, little bit of it back. So fast forward uh, further along, you know, and so that was kind of, I guess you could say that was kind of the pinnacle of the, the bottom, if you will. Um, but uh, continuing to pursue what it is that I was, uh, you know, doing, things got better. I started to do more houses. I started to get smarter with my money. I started to be tighter with my money. Uh, uh, we got to the point where um, we had built enough net worth and done enough flips uh, that we then transitioned to the commercial space. And we ended up buying a uh, $15 million building. Um, going through the hurdles of that, I had to figure out creative finance and I was able to get this deal Somebody who had zero commercial uh, real estate experience, I was able to get this deal, pull a loan, and do it without putting any any money, you know, out there. No money out of pocket for me. And so, uh, for me, that was like the pinnacle of my, uh, you know, real estate career, if you will. And I was on cloud nine. We were doing extremely well. Uh, you know, I. I got a Cadillac, my wife got a Range Rover, you know, we were, we were living it up and we, we felt like, man, we, we finally uh, made it, if you will, right? Like we were going on trips and we're doing things and um, uh, then things didn't go so well. So we had a catastrophic HVAC failure in the building. So this building was a 70,000 square foot office building. So we have businesses and these businesses are hot or they're cold and the AC don't work. Like nobody wants to work in that space. So they stop paying rent or they, they, you know, leave. And so we go from 90% occupancy down to like 60 and then COVID hits. And so, um, you know, at that time we had established a net worth. It was approximately like 5 million, like right under 5 million. And, um, you know, I could have sold that building and we could have just taken that money and, you know, built something else, uh, something else off of it. We could have lived off the interest, uh, you know, putting it on a, a small to medium risk portfolio. Um, uh, but it was kind of like, it's like, dude, seriously, like we went through all this and I thought that we had made it and now we just lost it all. So had to file bankruptcy. Uh, I, that was super scary. I didn't know anything about bankruptcy. So I'm like reading the cliff notes. I'm calling Tiffany. I'm like, help me. Like, what do I do? Like, and so, you know, getting kind of the crash course on that and realizing, okay, well, I, I'm not going to be homeless. I'm not going to lose my home. Right. That was comforting. Uh, I won't lose one of our cars at least. Um, you know, but it was, it was a very stressful time, you know, I, and going from hero to zero is never fun. Right. And, and so, um, but it was something that it was a necessity. It was a necessity to get us where we are now, which is far, a far better position. It's just the, the opportunities that we have now are, are way more uh, abundant than they could have ever been had I stayed in that kind of little rabbit hole. And that was part of the problem. Um, I got comfortable. Mm -hmm. I got comfortable. I got a uh, tunnel vision. Um, I had real estate buddies tell me like, Hey man, you, you need to, you know, keep, keep doing some of your flips. Hey, uh, keep, um, uh, why don't you build off your portfolio or your rentals? Like we had sold, we Here had, a, is. and we, you, we sold, you know, and, and I, I wasn't diversified. I didn't have any money in, in any type of, uh, stocks or anything like that which i don't know that that necessarily would have been helpful especially with with covid but um just the fact that i got tunnel vision and i got comfortable and then you know all hell broke loose and 
you know, I'm stuck with the bag. Like, what am I going to do now? So, um, I see those gurus and the real estate buddies weren't there to help pay the mortgage while you're getting through it, right? No, no, they sure no, won't. No, no, no. <laughs> no. And I was a pretty hefty mortgage too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that struggle there. You know, we couldn't refinance during COVID. Like, uh, you know, it was just kind of this Murphy's Law type thing took effect and. And so I, I went back into this uh, kind of depressive phase. You know, I, I stopped working out. I was gaining weight, you know, and just that in itself can have an effect on anybody, regardless of their circumstances, successful or unsuccessful, right? Like, um, our suppose, success comes from a routine yeah. every single day. And when we stop a healthy routine, whether that be mentally, physically, spiritually, or more importantly, all three, right? Um, it takes us longer to get back on top. Yeah. And so I'd say, and that one, I don't know, maybe six months. It took me about six months to be like, okay, stupid. Enough's enough, you know? So got back in the gym. Um, I started to uh, get back into mixed martial arts. So I did it a little bit when I was in Japan before I got out of the Marine Corps. And Shout uh, out to Adam Tirina. Heck yeah. <laughs> Just trained with him this past week too. Let me tell you something. I trained with him four days a week and he should be the entrepreneur spirit animal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. He's going to blow up very quickly too. Very quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get to that part. Heck yeah. So, um, uh, let's see, where were we? I'm in this phase now. I'm like, okay, I, I need to get back in the saddle. So I start, I start training at a gym here locally and um, uh, make good friends with some pro fighters. And, uh, you know, they just started, you know, obviously casual conversation. We're buddies, we're training or whatever. Uh, um, hey, why is this this way? Why can't you get a fight? Why are you struggling with this? Uh, you know, just kind of, that, I, it was kind of a subconscious, like I didn't, I guess I didn't realize what I was doing. It was just more just being intuitive, right? Uh, and there are so but many- are always looking to solve a problem. So you're asking questions because you, since there's a problem, and yeah. so you're trying to solve the problem. Yeah, and so, um, I just identified there's, there were so many gaps and spaces and problems in the mixed martial arts industry as a whole, coming from an amateur fighter to a pro fighter. And, uh, one day, you know, I, I asked some more questions and a light bulb went off and I went home and <laughs> I remember Angelica made dinner and I was like, Hey babe, I'm going to eat real quick, but I need to go in the garage for a few hours. And she's like, okay, why? I was like, I've got this idea. And she just kind of laughed. She's like, okay, I'm seeing a few hours. <laughs> so I come in my whiteboard and no shit, three hours straight. I just sat there and mapped out uh, the whole thing, the how, how are we going to fix it? Um, you know, where are the spaces at? How do I connect this dot to that dot? And um, I created an app called Fight Unite. And uh, so that's where we are now. And, and, you know, kind of talking about all that past and the struggle and, you know, it's, there wouldn't even be enough time in this podcast to be able to go in the intricacies and the smaller details of the other struggle, right? Like going into the emotional side of things and the relationship side of things and everything, the ripple effect of just bad shit happening to you. Right. Um, um, but had none of those things happened, had, you know, I not gotten to the height of my real estate career and then crashed down burning and gone into a depressive state and ended up at this gym, none of this would have happened. This, I have a multi-billion dollar opportunity in front of me. I would have never been even close to that on my real estate side, at least not for another decade, right? If that. You know, so it's, it's, it's like, dude, this, it's huge. It's a huge blessing to me to, to 
have built off of all the failures and all the struggles and learn from them and establish more character and establish more relationships, realized who was real and who wasn't real because coming along the journey, that's, that's a part of it, right? Like there's people that will be there to help you. And then there's people that they say they will, but when the time comes, they're like, I'm going to tell you something. I am such a fan of firing people from my life. Fire them. Um, we all intuitively know, and then it's always shown to us, and we just take longer to do the firing, right? Um, and other people should do that uh, to us as well when we're not serving. It, it's the truth, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the real tangible is you found something that made you feel good that you would seek out right the martial arts to feel stronger and to get out of these um you know uh, seasons in life where you felt defeated and then within that you found problems that that business was experiencing mm -hmm. and so i mean the tangible is one always find in whatever you're going to make money in or want to make money in that you're passionate about it that it makes you feel good more so than any money you could will or are making from right yeah. it's got to be how does it make me feel yeah. because we're humans and we're operated by how we feel more than we're operated by anything else in this world yeah it's why yeah. we have to protect and i say fire people because we feel based off how people surrounding us in our environment, we allow them to make us feel, right? So you went to a place that always made you feel strong and powerful and motivated and a purpose. And through talking, uh, audience, find something that makes you feel powerful, that makes you feel like you have a purpose, that makes you feel strong mentally, uh, uh, soul, spiritually, physically i like to find things that all three make me feel mentally challenged uh spiritually challenged physically challenged that's where i find my happiness right find that that is your passion and then look at that and see what is this industry's struggles what are their problems and then do what freddie did he went home was like thank you for making dinner babe i'm gonna scarf it down real fast and I'm going to go whiteboard. No one's paying me to do this. No one even asked me to do this, right? I'm doing it because I literally don't even care about this plate of food, no matter how starving I am, because I'm so excited to go solve this problem on my whiteboard. If you do that, you will be that excited to go spend your free time solving a problem no one asks you to solve. Because it's something that you're passionate about that motivates you, that drives you. And that's the tangible. <clears throat> so often it's about how much money can I make? Here's an example of Freddie. He answered an ad that said, you make 100K doing this. It wasn't anything he had any interest in. Um, and it was a bomb, right? It didn't equate to anything that was productive in his life other than a learning lesson that he then pivoted and built on so there's no regret there, right? But what you can learn is find something that you are driven by, uh, that you're passionate by, like physical, soul, brain, and then look at that industry. Every industry has problems. And a lot of times people working in the industry aren't passionate about it, so they're not actually super excited to, for free, try to solve those problems or even look at the problems. That's what you did. And so now I'm so excited to hear. He solved the problem, by the way, guys. That whiteboard should have, I hope you took a screenshot. You probably didn't because you had no idea how it was going to develop. Oh, I and then we did it like Unite. Oh, good. That's my man. Love it. That's the hat you're wearing. I'm so excited. Now, <clears throat> I'm biased. I'm an investor um, because uh, it's amazing, guys. I mean, amazing and brilliant. And it's been a problem that has existed for how many generations in this industry? I mean, since and I yeah, and I also have lived in that world and never thought that it was 
a problem because I never asked or cared. But you did. So what is the big problem in this industry that you solved? So I would say the biggest problem right now that we're addressing is uh, fighter health care. Um, but that's a byproduct to also supplemental income. And so health care is only provided to fighters when they get in the ring. And depending on what promotion they're with, they may or may not get their deductible covered. Well, going back to me meeting some of these pros and becoming friends with them at this gym and coming up with this idea, um, it, it doesn't do them any good to have health care and still have to pay a $2,500 deductible when all they're making is $2,500 on their fight. So they get hurt. They got to pay their coaches. They got to pay nutrition. They got to pay for travel and lodging and all these other things, right? Uh, sponsors kind of help offset that a little bit. But if I make $2,500, even if I made $5,000 on a fight and then I get hurt because I got to go to the hospital and fix whatever in my leg or my knee or my hand or right. whatever, um, well, you basically made no money in something that you're trying to pursue as a career. Uh, and it makes it, it, it stifles you kind of from growing and accelerating and pushing to the next level because you if you're not training, then you're working. And if you're working, you're not training. Like it's like this double-edged sword, right? And so uh, it's, it ends up being a crutch for a lot of talented fighters that really have the ability to make it to the biggest promotions there are like UFC and Bellator and One and all these uh, uh, promotions that, that pay pretty well. Um, so we have created a solution within the app to be able to get fighters ultimately free healthcare. Um, uh, and it's it's never been done before. Uh, we we're in talks right now, uh, uh, finalizing everything with the top insurance companies in the nation, um, getting this done, and 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 they're excited about it because nobody's ever done it before. And so uh, that's the first portion of it in relation to fighters. The second is supplemental income. And so uh, in creating the, this app, we're able to create income and do a pass through to these fighters that are, you know, trying to pursue something great. And so it's the ability to really just help fighters as individuals. Um, you know, there's that saying, you, if you want to be successful, seek out to help people just like you're talking about. Um, I, I, I have created a solution and I'm helping fix a problem and I'm going to be helping thousands and thousands of, of fighters in the process. And in return, whatever comes out of that is going to be beautiful because it's gra it's a gratification that I am helping somebody, right? I'm helping not just one person, but them and their families and their children, uh, which has never been done before by anybody in the space ever. And so um, I take great pride in that. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. You know, we've, we've already met with some of the top, uh, people in the space, you know, up to the UFC and, and then coming back down, we've got an event this weekend in Oklahoma at a promotion out, out of uh, Shawnee. And uh, we're going to continue to press this thing to get the word out because we're so excited about the fact that we legitimately have something that nobody else has, and we are going to change thousands and thousands of people's lives. And there's so much to it. There's, there's stuff for fans, there's stuff for managers, there's stuff for the promotions. And, you know, if you're a fan, this is, it's a central location for you to not have to dig through five, six different apps to find what it is you want from stats to your favorite fighter to somebody in a specific fight style. Um, and so or I'm just- them. Or just to simply support them and let Absolutely. them know that you love them. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're, we are, we are just, we're stoked. We're stoked. Uh, we, we have zero negative feedback from anybody in the space from the, the top UFC champs down to uh, pros uh, that are here local that everybody's excited about it. And so we are just um, uh, ready to get this thing out to the public so people can start downloading and, and, and uh, enjoying the services. So I love it. I love it. So I always end with 
Okay, so now we know where you are today and we know how you got here. The amazing victories and the equal tragedies along the way. Um, but since we never arrived, what do you think that you should be doing better right now? Or, or what challenge can we give you, me, yourself, the audience, um, to accomplish or start to accomplish in the next three months? Um, let me make sure I understand your question correctly. So what could I challenge myself in where I'm at right now? Um, I would say uh, a delegation. So as a solopreneur, if you will, I've never had to do that. And so it's, it's uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult for me. I'm like, okay, I'll take care of it. 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 And, and I'm, I'm in the weeds. I'm like, I got this. Okay. Okay. I got this. I got that. Oh, got this meeting, you know? And so, uh, and you're only one person and only 24 hours and you cannot multiply either of those. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, it's a given, you know, I work the, the, the men I oil on a regular basis. However, I could lessen that load by delegating better um, we're bringing in some super talented individuals, um, uh, as we work up to this launch and that's a part of that. So, uh, you know, I guess I would say the challenge is one identifying what it is that you see as a potential weakness, um, and more so what your strengths is so that you can focus on those strengths and delegate those weaknesses to somebody who has a strength in your weakness. You know, and so uh, that was a beautiful thing. You actually helped me kind of hone in on that on our on our um, last meeting we had we had with you, Tiffany. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's super important, and it's something that somebody who has uh, always kind of been bred to just work hard, right? Like that's what you know, like whatever. It's this is just what I do, right? Like I don't, you know, I don't need to delegate that, like because I can do it, right? Well, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Or that it's smart that you do. Yeah. Because it delays the end goal. And also because I think that you're taking away um, the person that you would delegate to, you're taking away their growth, their journey. You're, I think it's uh, selfish in a, in a way that we don't actually understand that the whole reason for doing this is having the people that it involves <clears throat> and involving that people means that you have to let go of things so that they can be a part of the journey and they can be connected to it and they can grow and they can learn and if they can't do it as good as you then your skill level is getting them to be as good as you and doing it because mm -hmm. otherwise it is selfish right 100 percent well, I'm going to calendar on my calendar in three months. And I want to know your journey from today, three months from today, and how you've grown to being um, a leader, not just a doer. And how this business from solo entrepreneur to entrepreneur and business owner and team lead, um, captain, PI test guys, look it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> has grown. I, I think that in three months, uh, you'll be a different Freddy in that aspect. And I'm super excited to see it. I know the audience will be super excited to see it every three months. Um, just me and you will do a little FaceTime on my iPhone and you'll give me just a three minute update on where you are in retrospect to just that three month thing and what you focused on. And then I'll plug it into the subscription list in the podcast, because I think that's super important is we're not here to say how I've arrived. We're here to say that I'm human, I'm on a journey. Here's my journey so far. Here's my current date journey. And here's my challenge. Because that's happiness is progression, challenges, a purpose of growth. I mean, evolution, right? Absolutely. Where can we find Fight Unite for everyone that's super excited about it? So right now you can free register at fightunite.com. You can go there, they'll have an explanation video to talk about all the different features for whatever user type you are, whether you're a fan or manager or fighter practitioner. And so 
Uh, we would love it if you guys went and pre-registered, uh, help support us, uh, go to our Instagram, you know, follow us on there, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, it would be super helpful. Um, and we look forward to having you come along for the journey. And for you audience that are just listening, don't have the video or driving, don't worry about it. When it gets downloaded to Apple or Spotify or Anchor, or any way that you like to listen to podcasts, it'll be in the bio of this podcast. You'll have all the ways to find Fight Unite. Um, and, you know, uh, even if you don't fall into in those user groups, I mean, I think that if you're looking to have ideas or, or concepts or a way that he solved a generational problem in one industry. If you want to be that, because I think that's what makes money, find something you're passionate about and solve a problem, just go and be a looky-loo <laughs> and see how he solved this problem that I didn't know existed. People in the industry knew it existed, but didn't even acknowledge it existed. And he did it. And that's passion, asking questions, and just trying. So I'm super profoundly impressed by you, Freddie, as a human, as a business owner, but ultimately as someone that looks at evolution as something not to um, have a chip on their shoulder, but to be humble and to challenge themselves. And I think that's the true definition of a true entrepreneur. And I think that's success. That every day as a human being, you are humble as equally challenging yourself to be more. Thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate it very much. I'm so blessed to have you on and you have a good day and uh, love to hear what happens in the next three months. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Bye, friend. Bye.